machine making a bassline because they thought it was trying to replace an electric bass, but it was meant to sound funky. So I made this example. As I usually say, Arturia has a great vision for us to learn about the history of synthesizers. So they launched a new plugin that honors and tributes the sound of the 303 Roland machine. In 1983, there was a Scottish pop band called Orange Juice, and they released a song called Juice It Up. It was probably one of the few pop songs that actually got a true 303 sound out in the, in the music market. And despite that, it was distributed across the US, but with a user manual in Japanese. So very few people were able to make it work or make it sound. And that's how it found its own place in Chicago, in the hometown of house music, bringing this instrument to build a whole new genre called Acid House. So when you first launch the plugin, you always get some nice sound out of it. You have to change between sequencer, ARP, or external input. External input meaning that you can actually play your keyboard through it. If you have the sequencer on, what will happen is that you will press one key and the sequence will begin. And with the arpeggiator, press a chord and then something will start playing. It's going to be arpeggiated. You can change the patterns right here. Uh, you can even use these buttons right here if you're playing maybe, for example, with your left hand and you want to slide between two notes. And you can start playing a lot with these kind of things as long as you have one free hand or you can automate this within your track. So this is not going to be a step by step of the 303. I'm going to show you a couple of sounds that I made and how I took advantage of some of the extra things that Arturia offers in this version of it. For example, the original, the original 303 only has these two waveforms. That's a saw wave and a square wave that as any square wave, you can actually pulse with more modulate it so you can change the relationship of how long it stays on the positive or the, neg or the negative cycle. For most of the sounds you will probably end up boosting the bass a lot so it actually sounds a lot bassier and playing around with the distortion like just pushing it. Arturia is probably taking advantage of all of the saturations they have available since they made the cold fire. So they are adding a lot of these saturations at different stages in their own plugins. So you can try them and most of them will sound really good. Remember that saturation is a non-linear process, so it will have a sweet spot. It will ha have a place where you're sacrificing enough low end. So as you can see, you have a lot of options, right? Uh, if you want that really, really sharp, edgy sound of the 303, you have to play with the cutoff wrench because this will play in hand with the filter and the cutoff. So it's going to get like a really high resonance, but that's part of the sound of the 303. <laughs> On most analog emulation stops, I usually pull these down as much as possible. Pitch tracking just deviates the tuning a bit, so I wouldn't play a lot with it for most styles. And the clipper is just like clipping the signal at the output. <laughs> Thank you. 
One extra add-on by Arturia is the sub oscillator. This is really interesting to have because now you have a chance to play a little bit higher and have a support on the low end. So you can pull it as down as you want as long as it can actually produce it. Uh, there are some nice combinations of using these two waveforms. <laughs> Okay, so I did an example and I'm going to walk you through what I did. So first, this is like the cleanest version of it. You can see some knobs, some LEDs moving around because I have some LFOs assigned to it. This one is a step sequenced example. So against the drums, it sounds like this. So what you need to know to play with a step sequencer is that you can erase everything right here. You can export the MIDI right here. Like you can just drag it into your DAW. You can just do it like this and it instantly brings this pattern into your DAW. You can save the pattern. But one of the interesting features that it has, I have to make the window smaller because it doesn't fit, is how you can play with the scale. So if you have a scale, available and you change between scales, your pattern instantly moves towards it and you can change your sequence will sound like just moving it from scale to scale and changing the pattern itself. So different patterns could be already preset on a certain scale, but you can shift that afterwards if you don't like it. That's the speed of how fast is the sequencer going regarding the tempo of your session and the gate is something that maybe not too many people know how to deal with. So if the gate is shorter, the step gets shorter. So the sound is shorter. It gets more of a staccato kind of sound. If it gets longer, it could even be a full whole note, you know? So let me show you with this small pattern uh, what happens when I change this the gate. <laughs> So that's what the that's what the gate does. You can change the playback so it goes forward and backwards, forward, blah 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 blah. You can do it anyway. It has some swing to it. That's a really nice feature. So it's not really really on the grid. You can change the size of the steps or how many steps you want it to be. You can also drag it on the right. That also helps a lot. You can shift and transpose all of your sequence. You can offset all of your sequence with the octave shifting because some steps you might want them to be upper and lower. For example, maybe I want this step to go from one octave down into one octave up. And let's try it like this. these other features right here that are slide, accent, and vibrato. Uh, what this means is that if I have all of the slides off, every single note that's played is going to have a, se a separate attack to it. If I place the slide, it's going to connect these two notes. The accent usually works better with the step sequencing idea because if you only place notes with a flat velocity to them, there's going to be no accent. And most of the interesting things that happen in music happen because it has an accent. It lets us know about groove and music and rhythm. So whenever I drop all of the accents, And I could even accent it a little bit more using this knob right here and this one up here. So that helps me bring a lot more life into my sequence. You could also use some tricks with a vibrato setting. For example, maybe I want this step, only this step to have a vibrato. If you make it really, really short and with a huge amount, it's going to feel like it's detuning floppy.
But if I really increase the speed of it around here and I increase the amount, it's going to sound more like a chorus in one single step. <laughs> And of course, there's a frequency speed relationship with the note itself. So using all of that is how I made this sequence. So for this sequence, that's pretty much all I'm using. As you can see, I'm also using some modulation lanes to actually accentuate the sub part of the bar. Uh, if you just hover your mouse of, at the right of the title, you can see the destinations of the modulation section. And I have a couple of modulations for the accent as well. And this one is not doing way too much on the envelope modulation. Uh, on the effects section of the plugin, we have a lot of options. Uh, Arturo, I think, has done a really good job taking advantage of their FX collection and putting it in the FX section of their own plugins, of their own synths. So you have a lot of options to pick from. So I build this chain. Let me show you how it sounds when I start building up the sound one effect after the other. Uh, first, it's this sound. <laughs> Okay, so the chorus is going to help me make it a little bit more stereo. Of course, you have some wet to it. You can vary several parameters. Then I added some filtering. And by the way, I'm sorry to say this because I love Arturia, but you couldn't find a more difficult way to realize that you have to click and drag here to kind of find the different options and settings. Like there are so many ways to let people know that this is a menu. And yeah, I really don't like that. <laughs> I really like this kind of filter with the resonance because it gives me this FM edge to it to the sound. Then I have more distortion added up and it's a really smart idea to have an EQ or a filter section that you can set again. Why make it so hard to find just pre and post? There should be like an arrow or something. It's so hard to find this. Uh, to make it pre or post, you have three different filters at hand, cutoff resonance, blah, 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 and a lot of different kinds of distortion. Because just as you have so many here, you have so many there, and you can really take advantage of that different stages of distortion. <laughs> And the super unison that usually what it would be doing is to increase the amount of oscillator voices and detune them just a tad. But now it's actually detuning the whole signal that you have made before this. Since the chorus is already detuning, this is again detuning. And that's why you have this small knob. Uh, so you can detune it as much as you want and you can keep on making it like this hollow stereo but really punchy sound. with the amount of voices that you want, etc., etc. So let me show you how this patch evolved so I could take advantage of more features within the synth. So in this version, what I did is I took advantage of this section that's called transmutation. So whenever I hit generate, it actually gives me random notes in the sequence and it changes the octave, the slide, the accent, the vibrato. It changes every single parameter at sight. <clears throat> and with the density, what you can do is you can change the amount of notes that you have, as you can see. So 
So yeah, I played a lot more with the density and as you can see, I'm also modulating a little bit more the gate. So I get some shorter attacks in certain places with the modulation one. So as the phrase ends, I get shorter notes and then I open them again. It's a small, slightly different effect chain. I have a delay here uh, instead of, I don't remember what I had in the other one. Uh, I tried switching up a little bit some of the parameters, but it's pretty much the same, except that it has a bit more notes that I added randomly using the transmutation section. You could also make the scale vary with the generate using these faders right here by dragging them and changing the amount of variation that they will have. You could also hover your mouse over here and it will allow you to do that. Also with the slide, with the accent and the vibrato, with the gate, with the octaves and as you can see as you are hovering over the different parts of the screen you get some options so try to look deep into the plugin it seems really simple but it has a lot of options to it and the last example that for me could be the most exciting one is I did a polymetric example it's polymetric because I have different amount of steps so it's not just a four on the floor sequence as most of the times we will have on electronic music. So if you activate this polymetric section, what you can do is you can drag this blue bar here and I can have only eight steps for the octaves. I can have 16 steps and the machine has up to 64 steps. So take advantage of that if you want. Uh, the slide and the vibrato have um, and the accent has only six. So I'm looking for a mathematical proportion there that I really like and see how it fits within the musical context. Okay, so it does take some time for it to match all again, but that's why it's polymetric and I like it, so <laughs> it works. This sound has different effects, a little bit of different distortion. It has nothing way too interesting in the modulation section. What I might add about the modulation section is that you can have bipolar modulation or unipolar modulation. This means that any knob that's being modulated, for example, let's go into the modulation one for the volume. As you can see, it first moves up. So the knob will be the starting point and then it will move upwards if you're applying a positive modulation. If I was applying a negative modulation, it would go down first and then it will bring it back up. But I'm doing it the other way around. If I was doing it bipolar, what will happen is that this starting position of the knob will be this center line and I will move around it. In this case, I don't need that. So you know how to work with unipolar and bipolar settings. So for the main sound, I did something that it's a bit noisy. Okay, let me walk you through it. <laughs> I really like this sound. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm using the modulation in a different way right here because now the sequence like just moving across the arrangement in a longer playtime and it's going to eventually come back to the first place where it started. So as you can see, one of the main differences is that I'm using the modulation instead of a one shot or a loop as the other ones, I'm using it as a run mode. So what that means is that it's constantly playing as long as you're actually starting on one setting on, on, on the beginning of the bar within your arrangement. So this will always match up. And I'm modulating cross the arrangement in three different ways uh, with different durations. And one thing that I found that is uh, interesting enough is that you can even modulate the scale or the amplitude of how much this is being applied to something. So for example, this is modulating the volume of the sub oscillator but if I turn this scale down, like manually, this is not going to get modulated as much. If I do it 50%, it's, it's moving a lot more. And if I do it 100%, it's doing a lot more. So by modulating this across one bar, 
every single bar this is getting like 100 applied this lets me start maybe in this max and in and and vary how this is going i could even do a polymetric relationship between this modulation and this modulation so the biggest amplitude of the step doesn't match you could change to precisely to a different kind of sync mode from a triplet to a dotted mode so it's not precisely all paired up in all paired up there's nothing way too interesting in this sound like if you want the how is it set up like just take a screenshot of this uh, and let me show you the upper side of it like that's the setting i have for this <clears throat> most of the things that i'm using here maybe part of the sound comes from this multiband section and this whole distortion section that has like this really strong non-linear way of behaving if i turn this off It still has a little bit of that character to it. It also has to do with the tube and the dry and the wet almost at 100% and the two stages of reverb with different decay times. That's pretty much it. I even tried to modulate all of the parameters in the effects section and I found that you cannot do every single effect modulation. You can always do the dry wet, but you cannot do every single knob that you find. And I think that's strange. Like, I have no idea why did they made that decision. Ha I would like to have that option because it's only dragging and dropping. And having a big modulation matrix is important for me. Like, not even this, you know? Like, I, I think there's like a strange decision there of what's the sweet spot of way too analog and but not so modern. I like the sound of it. I really like the sound of it. So go check it out. If you like this kind of video, you know, comment, share, like, subscribe and do all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.